your car is going to feel like it is sentient by the end of the year. Elon Musk just spoke at the All In Summit. We're going to focus on his comments, which I haven't heard yet, but I've seen the timestamps for Tesla, Optimus, the Optimus hands, and Tesla AI in general. Anyway, um, Optimus <laughs> is, um, I think, going to be the greatest uh, product in the history of humanity. What Big statement from Jason, and I will definitely say, certainly going to be the most important and impactful, if successful at scale. And it's no contest nothing even close in second place what's the progress like and how much of your how many of your cycles are going specifically to optimus what's the timeline i think you're on version three maybe four tell us everything uh well yeah no everything would take a long time <laughs> we've got um, time but, <laughs> <laughs> um we're, we're finalizing the design of optimus version three and uh that that really is going to be a very remarkable robot um, it will have the, essentially the manual dexterity of a human, so meaning a like very complex hand, um, a, the, a, an AI mind that can navigate and comprehend reality, um, and it will be made in very high volume. Uh, those are the three things that are missing. Like if you see any other um, robotics uh, company, they're missing those three things. Those are the three really hard things. Um, and uh, I, I, I spend actually at this point... Um, it, it might be more of my mental cycles than anything, anything else, any other single thing on Optimus. Uh, that's, that, that's solving for uh, real-world AI, uh, all of the electromechanical issues of Optimus, the, the supply chain and production challenges of it, because we have, there is no supply chain that exists for humanoid robots. So it has to be, we have to recreate it from scratch, um, and which requires doing a lot of vertical integration. Um, n none of the actuators in Optimus um, are available from an existing supply chain. Um, so, but I, I think it is accurate to say that if successful, Optimus will be the biggest product ever. Thanks, Captain Obvious. So a couple of things there. I just like Tesla had to build out the electric vehicle supply chain and vertically integrate an enormous amount because I couldn't get a lot of stuff off the shelf from existing supplies. The same is true of Optimus. And to Elon's earlier point about those three building blocks, he's absolutely right. There's plenty of companies today producing very small numbers of prototypes and even commercial humanoid robots with mostly off-the-shelf components at very low volumes. Now, this is all good and well until a company like Tesla comes along, builds out supply chain for mass production, drives costs down, vertically integrates and in-houses all sorts of things, actuators, motors, components, and has an enormously capable product for a significantly lower cost that they can produce at an astronomical volume versus anyone else in the marketplace. And at that point, it's G fucking G. The hands, the brain, and the ability to mass produce at scale, that's what matters. And speaking of the brain, the real world AI component, no one has access to Tesla's data stream for the real world. And this is a very important problem if you're not Tesla. The cost of it at scale, twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 a robot. What, what do you think the first wave of them will cost? And yeah, when will we be able to buy one to work on the ranch? I think that the, the marginal cost of production once you hit a million units per year, uh, is probably around the $20,000 range. Uh, it, it, it sort of depends on how much you spend on the AI chip in the, in the uh, robot. Um, and you need to achieve a lot of efficiencies in the actuators. Uh, there are um, 26 actuators per arm, like 26 electric, like motors, gearboxes, and power electronics. Um, so, so it, but, but the, 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 the AI chip will be pretty expensive. Like that, that might be like five, five or six thousand dollars of the of the bill of materials, maybe more. Um, and um, but but so I, but I think at volume, at a million units a year, the the production cost is probably on the order of twenty thousand dollars, maybe twenty five, something like that. And the um, price will be as a function of demand. Elon, um, can you? Still, interestingly, no mention of the cost to operate the software. Now, don't be surprised if the very first versions of Optimus available to consumers are well into the six figures, much like the initial Tesla vehicles. Also, over 100 grand a pop. At low volume, you're going to have relatively high costs. But at mass volume, million plus units per year, this is what Tesla's aiming for. It's not a number that Musk has pulled out of his ass, but something that he's thought about. However, the way to really think about Optimus, it's not cost, it's value. Initially, Tesla's value proposition is going to be this robot can do XYZ labor in this situation work about three times as many hours per week as an employee who you're currently paying 
all in over $100,000 of compensation. If Optimus could work as efficiently and as quickly, but do three times the hours a week, already if you're spending 100 grand plus on an employee, it's a $300,000 asset that you could buy for potentially a lot less than that and start printing money almost instantly. So even initially, even if an Optimus humanoid robot costs 100 plus thousand dollars, which I expect they will initially, the value proposition, how much value you receive for what you're paying, it's got to be a no-brainer for a lot of companies, automotive, warehousing, logistics, all of the things today that involve a lot of repetition and not a lot of cognition. That's the low-hanging fruit, Tesla's initial customers. And then as they can drive costs down and the capabilities increase, Optimus can go from factories and warehouses to just about everywhere. Maybe explain to everybody why the hand is so important to get right and why, you know, the actuator design is so unique and, you know, why it's so difficult, why nobody makes it and why you have to start there almost to build the rest of the, the robot properly. Well, it turns out human hands are incredibly, they've evolved to, the, to be this incredibly sophisticated machine. Like the, your hand is you know, an, an, actually a remarkable thing. It's, look, look closely at your hands. <laughs> and, and think of all the things you can do with your hands, which is a lot. <laughs> I can think um, of many things. <laughs> yeah, I was just thinking about something. You know, you, your hands are a very versatile instrument. Yeah, you can um, give a high five. <laughs> <laughs> very versatile. <laughs> Um, you know, you, you, you can swing a baseball bat, you can uh, thread needles, you, you can you put thread in a needle, uh, you can play the piano with violin, um, you know, you could disassemble or assemble a car. The hands are in incredibly versatile instruments. Um, and um, most of the muscles of, of, of the hand are, are actually in the forearm. So your, your hand is kind of like a, like a, like it's like a puppet. Like it's mostly a puppet. The, mus the muscles are coming from the forearm and they're pulling the tendons, uh, which are, you know, it, it, also human tendon designs in, or, or human, human tendon evolution is incredibly good. Um, so you, you've got this web of tendons. You, you, you've got, um, I think, I think ha the human hand is something like, depending on how you count it, 27 or 28 degrees of freedom per, you know, in, in the hand. It's, uh, it's amazing. So in, in order to create a robot that can, uh, be a generalized uh, humanoid. You you must solve the hand the hands problem. Um, we had uh, we had it's, Ari. It's, it's got hands, knees, hands. Yeah. And so, is it like uh, when you were first building Tesla, where the supply chain doesn't exist, and now you have to go out and find folks to work with, and you know, build all this vertical integration, get support? Is it is it literally like it's just nowhere to be found, and you're going to have to build yes. all of this stuff up? Yes, we, we, we could not actually buy the actuators for any amount of money. They simply didn't exist. Even though there are, I don't know, 10, 20,000 electric motors out there of various sizes and shapes, um, we've had to design uh, every electric motor gearbox um, and, of, and the controlling electronics from scratch, basically from physics first principles. Well, the um, good news is that, you've got a lot of experience with factories over the last couple of decades. So yeah. How challenging is this versus Cybertruck, Model Y, Model X. Gigafactory, you know, the, the, yeah, the Fabergé egg known as the Model X? Try not to interrupt too much. Most of what Elon has said is self-explanatory. This is a great question from Jason. The one important piece of context and the caveat is that Tesla's already done these nearly impossible things. Had they not, failure would be almost certain. But Tesla has mass-produced many complicated products at scale, built out the supply chains, driven costs down, is industry leading in terms of the value that they can offer to customers. So now they can gather up all of that experience and invest it in Optimus, meaning it's going to be a lot, quote unquote, easier for Tesla to massively scale Optimus than it would have been without the previous experience. In fact, I would say close to 999 trillion percent chance of failure had they not already scaled their electric vehicle business to millions of units per year. And if I'm right, essentially 100% chance of failure, if you haven't done that, and all the other companies trying to produce humanoid robots at scale haven't done that. I wonder how this ends. Yeah. Right. Um, it's harder than any, any of those things. Yeah. <laughs> and Tesla's already done all of those things, which enables them to do this thing with a much higher chance of success. So you understand what I'm getting at here? Not only does Tesla have the building blocks necessary to actually execute Optimus, but they have the experience necessary to be successful in massive scale. There's no other company that has the building blocks or the experience. In other words, it's G fucking G. Telling you guys now. Much harder, significantly, yeah. Starship. Yes. Well, harder than Starship. Four, no, no, not hard. <laughs> Starship's harder. <laughs> okay. <laughs> harder. So somewhere between uh, a Model X and a Starship. <laughs> yeah. Is it is yeah. the 
what's harder, the hardware or the software? Right now, we're struggling with the, the final design of the hardware. Like I said, it's really primarily the hand. Not to just, just dismiss the rest of the robot. The rest of it's also uh, important. But, but the hands are, the hands inclusive of the forearm are a majority of the engineering difficulty of the entire robot. And then let, let's assume you get past the hardware challenges. How much do you sort of get for free um, based on all the progress that's happening with LLMs? Will, you know, will consumers just be able to interact with this, talk to the robot, ask oh, yeah. it to do things, it'll understand and sort of... Oh yeah, sure. yeah. yeah no you, problem. You're spending a lot of time with Annie, I noticed, online. <laughs> not, not that long. Um, Maybe I went a little over the top promoting Grok Imagine, but... Uh. <laughs> well, but in all seriousness, those characters and these robots, that seems to be, you know, like maybe they... You could get the embodiments of Annie, I suppose. Yeah. Why, why the human form factor, Elon? You could make something that's maybe better than a human or maybe simpler than a human to do specific tasks and maybe better than a human to do more things than a human can do. How do you decide to make it just like a human? Well, if you wanted to do all the things that a human can do, it turns out you need a humanoid robot. Um, so if you wanted to do a subset, it, that's much easier. Um, but uh, it turns out humans evolved to this, the shape and capabilities that we, we, we have um, it, it, for, for good reasons. Uh, there actually is, there, there is a, you know, like there's value to having five, you know, four fingers and a thumb. I won't get too nerdy, but this is actually a good point. Humans have evolved a very efficient design bipedal motion two legs why not three although some of us are lucky enough to have three what standing upright your posable thumbs we do generally speaking have a very efficient design and in addition to that we have built our world based on the human form factor so it's a double whammy it's a great design initially and the whole world has been built to fit this form factor anyway to must point about a subset of things you can have a robot that isn't humanoid that could do a subset of tasks mind anybody about tesla's general solution to autonomy eg their vehicles knowing how to drive period versus companies like Waymo, the very brittle, narrow solution, a subset of all driving. It's pretty simple. At a high level, if you have a humanoid form and human level of intelligence and human level dexterity is mainly just the hands, I mean, feet, legs, whatever, locomotion is not that hard. If you've got those three things, the human form, human intelligence, and human hand dexterity, you can do anything a human can do or more. That's what Tesla's aiming for. And even the pinky actually is, is quite useful. Um, Toes are a much more a question mark, but, but, but the fingers. <laughs> <laughs> well, also, humans, like, humans have designed the world as well, so we designed it for us. For us. So exactly. if you can make a humanoid robot, it'll be immediately backwards compatible with what we've built the world for. Precisely. Elon, there's, look, another, look, look. there's yeah. another part of um, the robot. So there's the LLMs, there's the actuation in the hands, but also there's the, um, the silicon that runs it. And there was... You know, Dojo, I think you you posted on X AI5 and AI6, and it just seemed like you were incredibly excited about the direction in which the silicon layer was also going. Can you tell us about that and what that is and what 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 are we what are we building here? What is being built? Is it a complement to everything that exists in the world? Is it a potential long-term competitor? What is it? Um, yeah, so at, at Tesla, we basically had two different chip programs. One dojo and one uh, do dojo on the training side, and then what we call, you know, AI four. It's just our inference chip. Um, uh, that the AI four is currently shipping in all vehicles, um, and we're finalizing finalizing the design of AI five, which will be an immense jump from AI four. Um, by some metrics, the improvement in AI five will be forty times better than AI four. Wow! So forty percent, forty times. Um, and, and uh, this is because we work so closely at a very fine-grained level on the AI software and the AI hardware. So we know exactly where the limiting factors are. And, and, um, and so effectively, the AI hardware and software teams are co-designing the chip. Um, so a 40x improvement in the silicon, I think then as, it, as everybody here in the audience experiences it, is that just an, almost like an order of magnitude increase in the quality of FST and the safety that you experience as a Tesla driver and then the quality of the robot, like where does it all manifest when you, when you, you know, bring it up and actually get it into production? Yeah, to be precise, the 40X is on, if you said like compared to the worst limitation on AI4, which is running the softmax operation. Yeah. Uh, we currently have to run softmax in around 40 steps in emulation mode. 
whereas that'll be, just be done in a few steps uh, natively in AI5. Um, AI5 chip will also be uh, easily handle mixed precision uh, models. So you don't have, it, it, it'll dynamically handle mixed precision. There's a bunch of sort of technical stuff that AI5 will do a lot better. Um, in terms of, of nominal sort of uh, raw compute, it's, it's eight times more compute, um, about nine times more memory. Uh. Damn, dude. So basically an order of magnitude more grunt and oomph and power. That's massive. Roughly five times more memory bandwidth. Um, so, uh, but because we're addressing some core limitations in AI4, you multiply that by that, that, that 8x compute improvement by another 5x improvement because of, of uh, optimization at a, at, a, at a very fine grained silicon level of things that are currently suboptimal in AI4. That's where you get the 40x improvement. You had, um, um, oh, keep going. Keep going. Uh, so, uh, now that said, I, I'm, I am confident that the current ch uh, chips, uh, AI, AI4 chips, that are in the cars will uh, achieve self-driving safety that is at least two to three times that of of human and and maybe even 10x wow. um, and the software that uh, will be released for that is is coming out over the next uh, few months so version 14 will be the biggest uh, upgrade in tesla software since version 12. Um, we are increasing the uh, parameter count by an order of magnitude um, the, the there's, there's, there's a lot of uh, reinforcement learning that's been used. There's, um, we, we, there, there, there's a, like you can think of AI sort of a, as a way of compressing reality. And, and, and some of those compression steps uh, we, uh, were too lossy and, and we addressed the lossiness in the compression steps. Um, so th these are all software updates that'll, that'll go out. So just over there updates. Your car is going to feel like it is sentient by the end of the year. This is one of those comments that just goes straight over the head of the traditional finance media analysts, just about everybody. Does not compute, therefore ignore. Don't be one of those folks. Do not ignore this. What Musk is getting at here, as the behaviour will be so human-like, if not better than human, therefore the safety profile, therefore the capability of a Tesla vehicle. Big prediction here, end of year, human level or better driving capability. Don't say he didn't warn you. Want more content? Early access? Bunch of perks? Click the links in the pinned comment. AG1 is awesome. I've been taking it daily now for more than three years. It's a great way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's packed full of vitamins, minerals, and whole food source nutrients. Plus, has prebiotics, probiotics, and adaptogens to improve gut health, regularity, and help your body handle stress. I'm always looking for an edge to help me feel and perform my best, which is why I haven't missed a day of AG1 for more than three years. Just try it and see how you feel. Click the link in the pinned comment or head to drinkag1.com slash SMR and get yourself a free one-year supply of vitamin D3 plus K2 and five travel packs.